Howdy YouTube, we're back at it again. Catch me off road channel. Today I'm gonna to make a quick video just showing you one of the updates I did with my uh, exhaust cutouts. So if you guys remember, I had this huge bundle of wires sitting right up in this area. It had relays on it, it had timers, it had a bunch of other stuff. Well, I've simplified it. I mean, it still doesn't look very simplified, but it's simplified into this little box right here. It's actually made by the same company. Um, their timers.shop is their website. They sell these parts on Amazon, but it's made by the same company that made the timers. Let me show you over here on my handy dandy trash can workbench. These are the old relays I used to have, they're automotive relays. I had one to open and one to close it, etc. Same with the timers. This wasn't CU because it was for closing. Um, but I went ahead and removed these and went with a different setup because one of my timers actually stopped working when I off-roaded it. I think it got too hot under the engine uh, bay, and so it, it, it overheated it. So what I did was I found that they had this guy for like 80 bucks. You could buy this really nice, convenient exhaust cutout. It's made just for exhaust cutouts. Um, it's a little controller module. This is what the paper looks like. Exhaust cutout motor controller. And it can do four different modes. Single momentary button. You can do single. There's another version of it. There's single latch button, which is the option I did. And two momentary buttons. This is the wiring diagram that shows how you wire it up. So what you do is, if you have two motors like I have for the cutouts, you put them, you know, your negative and positive, negative and positive for number one and number two. And then down at the bottom here, you give it ignition you give it 12 volts of positive from the battery then you give it a ground wire and then up here you have you can use two buttons if you have if you're setting it up that way i'm using option three which is a single latching button so i just use button one i fed my auxiliary upfitter switch wire into tr1 right there and then if you have an led for showing the status of it you can use that as well here but i don't have that so literally all i wired up was the blue right here is for my upfitter switch uh upfitter switch number two these two are the positive and negative from the um, cutouts. I wired them both into one, a single wire each. And then a positive and a negative, you know, your power and your ground. And that's literally all it is. Um, then you can activate, it shows you instructions on how to program it to use whatever kind of switch you want. So I followed the instructions. This little guy has Wi-Fi. You like, you can short that little, the left terminal down there at the bottom and it'll turn on the Wi-Fi. You connect to it with your phone and then you can program it from there. So right now, the way it works is when I hit the latching uh, keys here, let me show you actually. Here's my keys. So turn on ignition. And once you hit number two, I have it set for four seconds. So for four seconds, it'll open if you listen. Hopefully you could hear that. And then when I hit it again, It also closes for four seconds, so it's pretty sweet. That it's the same setup as I had with um, with the last uh, two relays and timer setup. So it's just a lot simplified now. All I have is five wires coming into it right here, and then it actually this folds down like this, kind of tucks in here behind this fuse, and then you there's a little lid that goes on it as well with four screws to hold it all together, and you can actually zip tie it or, or screw it into wherever you want. Um, using the two screw holes. So I'm gonna kind of mount it, tuck it up under here, and just zip tie it to something to keep it out of the way. And uh, the, the issue that I'm worried about is, it's, you can see it, the plastic box is open right here, and that's where the wires come through once the lid is on. Um, I'm worried about water getting into there, so I'll probably put the lid on and then maybe use some silicone to seal it all up, some waterproof stuff to keep water out of there. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot in there or overheat. Um, but that's my idea for now, just to keep water out of it, because, you know, this whole engine bay gets wet when I go on off-roading a lot. But, uh, that's my update. Um, oh, shout out to my subscriber, Eric, uh, for giving me trouble and, uh, being a pain in my neck. Thank you for that, Eric. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and, uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Oh, I'll put a link to this down in the description, too. It was about 80 bucks, I think, on their website. Um, highly recommended. They have really nice instructional videos on how to program it as well. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks guys.